Hello and welcome to the demonstration for the CPM 100 HG5. My name is John, I'm the UK Sales Manager for, for Lighthouse um, and for Max's CPM products. Um, I've got James with me today, he's um, part of the technical team. Um, he's going to go through some of the software, um, how the, the actual the printers work. He can show you um, obviously a little bit more detail um, about um, the actual operation of, of the software and, and, and how it works. Um, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to go through some of the applications for the printer, um, go through some of the materials we supply, obviously we'll go through the, the costs um, and then I can obviously show you the unit, you can actually see how, how the material loads, um, we can go through that in a little bit more detail. Um, what I'm going to do is obviously just so you can see the boards, we'll zoom into them first of all so I can go through some of the requirements for, for the system initially. Um, so if we just zoom, zoom into the first board. So this uh, system, CPM 100H, uh, we do two different versions of the CPM 100. So this is the higher definition version. So it's the 400 DPI printer. Uh, we do have another video for the 200 DPI printer. Um, so you can always watch that as well so you can see, see the difference between the two. Um, see the, this board, as you can't quite see the detail of it, but it shows the 200 DPI on your left, 400 DPI on your right, um, so it just shows you the detail that you can go down to. So that's the, the first main difference between the, the two versions is the definition that you can go down to. So when you are doing things like the bottom label here, if you're doing line drawings or you're going down to really fine um, font, font size, then you do need um, the, the 400 DPI system. Also, if you're looking at things like barcoding, so PCB board marking, if the barcode's quite small, obviously to be able to read it, to pick it up, you need the higher definition um, printer. But like I say, there is, there is two versions of the CPM printer, um, so it just depends on what's, what's applicable for, for your application. So the difference in price is about £500, so the 200 DPI version is 1495, the, the 400 DPI version is 195. Nine five, so there's a little bit of difference in price, um, but yeah, depends depends on how much your, your requirement is. In regards to materials, the materials are exactly the same uh, for whichever version of printer. Um, so if you do go up to the higher definition, it's not a higher you know cost for the actual materials. It's still still going to be the same price. So this just shows you some of the some of the applications on there. So you've got things like cable marking. So if you see this, the actual cable runs through here. So the great thing with the with the CPM product, it cuts um, the label to any shape or size. So it, give, it means it's versatile. You don't have to buy pre-cut labels for it. Um, you can you can actually define the size within the software, and it will cut down to this kind of detail. Uh, you've got things like a control panel there, um, but it means you can create bespoke labels, prototype labels, uh, one-offs. Um, and you're not having to cut it with a pair of scissors, which a lot of our customer or previous customers used to. Um, so you can actually, you know, get down to this this kind of detail, and it means you can do things like nested sets of labels as well. Um, so yeah, it just shows you some of the detail. Uh, this side, again, similar sort of detail. Let's see, with the software, you can do uh, barcoding. Um, so different ways you can do that. Obviously, you can manually type in a number and it will produce it to uh, barcode form. You can do a sequential number or you can actually link it to a database. So Excel spreadsheet access database. You can link it, bring the data in, almost like a mail merge, and it will produce different different barcode for each variable bit of information. Um, range of different uh, materials on here. So for the high definition printer, most of our customers will probably use something like polyester, obviously higher temperature range than, than vinyl. Um, also, we supply materials like polyimide, so things like PCB board marking, so high, high temperature, goes up to over 500 degrees. Um, so yeah, versatile sort of materials depending on what, you, what your requirement is. Um, this material here is like a polycarbonate effect, so it's like an over laminate. So again, if people are doing control panels, if they do smaller runs, um, you know, it gives you the versatility versatility to do that. Also cost wise on something like a control panel people tend to buy these in in sort of tens, twenties and the cost is quite high whereas with this obviously the, the, the cost is the same every time uh, there's no there's no sort of minimum order quantity so you can produce them 
as and when you need them. Also, the great thing with having your own system is the lead time. If you're waiting for a prototype label from a supplier, generally, you know, you're looking two to three weeks for it. Sometimes people will get it in, it's not quite right, then they have to send out again. With this system, you can make changes as and when it's, it's, it's on, on the label, you can stick it on and the product goes out, out the door on time. So that's the key, the key you know, purpose of, of, of this printer for product marketing is just to make sure that you get a professional looking label and your product goes, goes out on time. Um, so again, sort of other, other bits of detail along the top, you've got things like serial plates, rating plates. Um, so again, sort of versatile um, printer for that. Um, warning labels along the bottom, um, so we have uh, again different different sort of colours that you can you can buy the materials in. Uh, we do yellow in polyester as well. Um, some of our polyesters are UL UL recognised. Um, so again, if you if you require that to go on your products, um, we we can supply it. I'll just do the next one. So again, another difference between the 200 DPI and the 400 DPI version is the 400 DPI does process colour. So it uses CMYK ribbons um, to produce that, that colour. So in a similar way, your inkjet printer would do it. It does it in resin ribbons instead. So these are the thermal transfer printers. So they burn resin ribbon onto the face of uh, vinyl, polyester, or whatever the substrate is in the printer. And it just means that you've got longevity in the print. Um, but yeah, this, this board just shows some of the examples you can use through the CMYK um, colour. So, operational diagrams, standard operating procedures, either it's for site to go on a production line or whether it's going to be for a, a product. Sometimes people like to put them inside cases, pelly cases, that kind of thing. So it's a, again, it's a professional looking label. It's an operator procedure. Um, so whoever gets it can, is, is able to, to, to read the label straight away um, and operate whatever it is. Um, so yeah, so again, just shows the detail that you can go down to. Um, the, the actual material here we've got is, is generally it's vinyl, so it's white vinyl, and then you've got the different CMYK colours on top. Vinyl, uh, four to five year exterior grade, four to five year UV stable, temperature wise minus 40 to plus 70, um, so it's a durable material. Mainly, you know, it's, it's the, main, the main material that we supply at Lighthouse because it's, you know, it's a durable material and it lasts, it lasts outdoors. Um, again, sort of similar theme on the other side. Um, you've got operator instructions on here, standard operating procedures, and again, you can cut it into a recess, um, so it means it's just not a standard size size label. So, so yeah, we've got that detail in there. Um, the the advantages of this system, you know, over some other printers that are out on the market, um, basically. Like I say, it's multicolour and it cuts the label to any shape or size. So again, some printers where you have to buy die cut labels and you may have to stock, you know, lots of different reels of labels. With this, it produces a range of different labels all off one one reel of uh, vinyl or polyester, whatever the substrate is. So it means it's a it's a you know it's a flexible flexible product. What I'll do now is I'll show you uh, the actual system itself. So if I just turn it round. Um, so back here you've just got a hatch so you can actually see where the continuous reel is. So this reel comes on 15 meters, so one five meter rolls. Um, so on vinyl you're looking, it's, it's just over, sort of between two, three pound a meter for the vinyl. Um, so that just sits on a reel. So it's, you can see it's sprocket fed and that's just to keep the accuracy in the print. So that sits at the back there, runs through the printer. So you've got a little bar there. Um, just sit it on the, on the sprockets at the back there and then the ribbon which is your print actually comes in a cartridge just like that and then once it's been used up um, you just replace the ribbon um, so you notice on the front there there's a little tag so it's an RFID tag so that lets you know what color is in the printer it lets you know how much is left on the ribbon and puts a different heat setting through each each color ribbon top here you've got the thermal print head so that just runs along there so what you do is click in the cartridge just make sure it's in right and what it does when you shut the hatch, it just burns the ribbon onto the face of the, the material there. The other thing you've got is a little tungsten blade that sits inside the machine here. So that does the cutting. So if I just take it out, so you've got that blade there, I don't know if you can, you can pick that up, but that blade does five miles of cutting. 
So it's £25 to replace the blades. So it's the other, only other consumable part of the system. Um, if I can just get it back here in there. There we go. So that just sits in a little pocket there. And then uh, on, the front, on the side panel you've got um, manual feed key, uh, manual cut key, and then you've got a dial at the side which just you, you change the depth. Because on some of our materials, say the polycarbonate, it's a lot thicker material than, than vinyl, so you just need to change the depth. On the front it has a guillotine cut, so after you set the labels it can just chop off um, that set and then you get, get on to the next set. Um, on the back here so you've got things like USB, um, you've got a network port as well. So this system, again, slightly different to the 200 DPI system, you can actually network um, the software, and you can actually network the printer. Um, so obviously it just means you can use it on, on, on various, um, various PCs. Um, so what I'll do is I'll hand over to James and then he can go through the software. What we're going to do is we'll produce um, a sequential um, numbered label so you can actually see, um, so you pick up different, different variables um, and also you can, you can see how the barcoding works and then how the, the two passes of colour work as well. So I'll pass over to James. So hi everyone, I'm James. So I'm just going to take you through um, a couple of software bits. So if I just change that over to the monitor so you can see it. Right, so first things first in the software, we want to go to File and New. Here you want to select your corresponding printer. You may only have one, in which case it should automatically be selected, but I'll just select my, uh, my HD5. Finish. And first things first, we want to actually resize the label, because um, you're given a 400 by 100, just kind of default size here, but it's unlikely you are going to want to print that or cut that all the time. So if I just double click on the outside of the label, here you have a few different tabs which are, they're quite self-explanatory. Um, this printer tab is just like you saw initially. Um, paper layout, so you've got your portrait and your landscape and you, you can see the preview actually changing. Um, I'm going to keep it as landscape just for this one. The dimensions, so this is where all the magic happens really in terms of the, the resizing the label. Um, so the printer, as John said, you can print in, in batches. So I'm going to set it up so I'm just printing uh, four labels um, in, in, a, in a go. Um, so the width and the height is referring to the, 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 one, the one singular label. So if I just change this to 49 by 49, um, I'll explain why I've not gone with you know, the most common 50, for example, in a second. The margins should automatically be selected and they should just um, reposition themselves if they need to, so you shouldn't have to worry too much about those. Um, the, the radius, so the horizontal and vertical radius, that is just a visual reference. Uh, you won't be able to quite see it on here, um, but there is a slight radius on the corner there, so it's say if you want to match a certain radius of cut shape to it, anything like that. Um, on this occasion I don't want to, uh, so I'm just going to take that back to zero. And rows and columns, so under labels, labels across, this is where you are deciding how many labels you want to print on one page. Uh, so I'm just going to change this to two, then you can see the preview change, and two. And here you have X and Y gaps, so at the top here you may notice that I've, um, as like I said before, I changed it to 49 by 49, that is so I can get a, a one mil gap in, like that. So on the preview now you can see there's a nice um, there's a nice little kind of space in between the labels. So this is, when you put a cut shape in, it just leaves a nice area to actually weed the excess vinyl. And say if you want to run your pair of scissors down it, it just gives you the option to do that. Um, so then if I click OK, you can see now the, the you've got one white label. And if I just hold down Control and use a scroll to zoom out a little bit. And just scroll down. <coughs> So you've got one white label and three grey. So this first white label, anything you put on there is going to be duplicated onto the three grey labels. Um, so with this one, we're going to do a sequential number. So I'm just gonna zoom back in to this white label for you. So first of all, along the left-hand side, we have the toolbar. So again, quite self-explanatory in the sense that if you click on text, it's gonna put some text in, barcode, picture, so on and so forth. So if I just put a bit of text in, click on the label, I'm just going to say, Lighthouse Asset. You'll see here that 
um, that was going red and that's just because it's warning you that there's either some text outside the, the actual label itself or you are just getting close to the limit. So I'm just going to resize that manually. Um, so just like with Word or PowerPoint, it is Office or Microsoft based, this software, so it is quite, you know, quite similar in that respect. So at the top here you have your, your font style, so I'm just going to leave it as Arial. Uh, the, the actual size, and you can just increase and decrease it there. Um, so the actual styling of it as well, so I'm going to make that bold, just decrease the size of that slightly. And then along the top here you have an alignment toolbar, so I will touch on that in a second because that is um, how we actually align objects together. Um, so if I want to align this object to the label, if you right click on it, go to align, and previously I've actually used uh, this alignment tool which is why it's remembered it um, but if you haven't it may look something like that so it's up to you if you want to use this but um, the vertical alignment um, we want we want to just leave it because obviously vertically it's, it's, it's where we want it to be horizontal if we align it to the center and then just make sure aligns labels ticked and there we go that's that it probably didn't move too much because it wasn't that far off but it did move slightly so now we want to create a sequential number like we were saying before. So if you go to data at the top here and go to variables, you can use the wizard if you like, and that will just take you through step by step. It's a slightly, it's a slightly different, um, more foolproof process. Um, or you can click on new. Either or, it doesn't really matter. You will get the same result. So I'm just going to give it a name. So let's just call it LH assets. The maximum, the description, sorry, you don't have to worry about. That is purely for your reference if you have quite a few going on in the label. So I'm just going to leave that blank for now. Prompts again here from the source. That will just automatically default to prompts, which means when we go to print the labels, it's, it's going to prompt us to do something basically. And we want to leave it as that for now. Uh, maximum length. I'm just going to keep this to five for now. Again, you can, you can change that to whatever you like, um, provided it stays within inside the label. Uh, Multi-line is referring to if you have a kind of more than one line of, uh, of the variable. Again, not required in this. So if I go to serialization at the top, it's going to be an incremental counter. Again, you can go down as well, but I'm just going to change it to in incremental. Um, numeric, I'm going to keep the data format too because there's not going to be any in the actual variable part of the label. Um, there's not going to be any, any letters or anything like that, so I can just leave it as numeric. The step and the change value after the number of labels here, you might be able to see from the preview. If I increase the step, you can see it's going up in twos, going up in threes, going up in fours, so on and so forth. And say if you wanted to print a, co a copy um, of the labels without printing the whole kind of set again, if I change that to two, it prints two ones, two twos, two threes, two fours. Obviously, it depends what your, your, your variable set to, that's just previewing it and giving you some representation of what it's actually going to do. Again, not required on this, so I'm just going to I'm going to just keep that as one. And prompting. This is when you go to print, it will actually remind you to do something called prompt to do something. So if I just put enter starting asset number, and it should default to that start of printing, so you want to keep it as that. Okay. So then you can see it appears there. Now we actually want to put it into the label. So if I go to text up here, there's a little drop down arrow next to it. Use existing variable, and that is the name we gave it earlier. Click onto the label. And at the minute, because we've actually, we've not specified a default value at the minute. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna keep it, I'm gonna keep it like that for now. Then I want to just make it look a bit more like an asset label, I guess. So on the left hand side, I've got the I need a little inverse function. If I just drag over this, what this does, um, it actually it will print, it will actually print around the text but miss the text out. So the text will basically appear um, like it's the color of the vinyl. So I'm just going to align that again, and let's change it to blue. You may notice the text has gone a funny color. Um, so the only rule with an inverse is that you actually keep the uh, you keep the, the inverse and the text or whatever your inverse in the same color so if I change the text to blue that will now actually appear as white when it prints and if I just add a bit of text so do not remove 
Again, it's a very basic label. You, you might want to put um, some other bits on there, but I'm just going to keep it nice and simple. Um, and then finally, you want to add a cut shape. So if you print, if you set this to print at the minute, you'll just get a you get four labels that are chopped off at the very end of them, but no individual labels. So if I just go to a drop down arrow next to picture, clip art gallery, click onto the label. The section we're looking for is CPM, and there is actually a, a separate section for um, cut shapes. So I've clicked on CMYK there, CPM, cut shapes. Again, there are lots of different categories, and there's a few thousand different graphics in here, so it should keep you busy. Um, then again in here, we have lots of different cut shapes, each with a different radius, to try and match it to the kind of similar shape as your label initially. Uh, so I'm just going to choose the square one because that's the 90 by 90. That's important to the label. And if you want it to be a specific size, you can double click on it, go to appearance and actually adjust the width and the height there. And um, for this purpose, I'm not, I'm not too fussed but I'm going to actually just make it the same size as a label, which is 49 by 49. Click OK. And finally, if you want to align it to the label, right click, align, middle, center and align to label. And there we go. So if I actually set this to print now, go to print up here or file and print, it's up to you. These are just some kind of shortcuts as it were. So I'll go to file and print. You'll see here that it says enter starting asset number, so this is what we actually asked it to do earlier. So if I if I just hold down zero, see um, it doesn't go any any greater than five because that's what we set the limit to. So if I just change it to let's just go to uh, fifty just to keep it so you can see it change. And then down here you have labels and pages. Whenever we're adjusting the rows and columns, so we're printing a batch of labels, just make sure you click on pages and we'll just keep it as one page of four labels for now. You can click on preview. So if I just zoom out, I'm going to do that again so you can see how it's actually going to be printed. You can see there, so you've got 50, 51, 52, and 53. And yet, the only thing to do now is click print. So I'll just pop this data monitor on here for you. So you can see that um, it's just warming up now. It's detected that there is already black inserted into the printer, so it will automatically start printing that. And you can see lower down that uh, there is a blue, a blue just waiting to be printed. So I'll just change the camera over so you can actually see um, it printing. Like that. So there we go, John's just going to change the ribbon. So it's printed, it's printed the black, and we're just putting the blue cartridge in now. Close the lid, and it will automatically start printing. So now it's winding back to cut. go, it feeds it out and chops it off at the end for you. There we go, so we put the nice one mil gap in so it weeded off nicely. And uh, yeah, that's how to create a, a very basic label using a sequential number in the software. So I'll just hand you back to John. Thanks James for, for going through the, through the software there. So I hope that gives you a good idea about what the actual product does um, and about what the, the CPM 100 HG5 can actually print off for you, gives you a good idea about the, the software. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the price is 1995 um, so you just got VAT on top of that. Uh, the price includes uh, multi-license software and obviously you can you can network the software, um, that's, that's per site. Um, also we offer two to three hours training with the software on site just so you can go through it in a bit more detail. Um, and we can obviously make it specific to, to your requirements. Um, you get 12 months support, so if you need any help after the actual initial training session, whether it's on setting files up, how the printer works, anything um, sort of in regards to material, um, then we can, 
uh, so you go through that over the phone. Um, so we offer um, online videos as well um, with certain aspects of um, how the how the software works sort of technically, um, and obviously you get twelve months warranty included with that. Um, so if you did want any more information, then feel free to give us a call um, and have a look on our website. It's lighthouse.uk.com. Um, all the numbers, all the contact details are on the website. Um, so yeah. Um, there are other videos as well on some of our other products, so feel free to, to check those out. Um, but if you did want an on-site demonstration or you did want to go through any more detail, then feel free to contact us. Thanks for your time.